Hello, this is the Digital Loop Season 4, Episode 4. Hi, Ivan. Hi, Paul. Well, first of all, um, Happy New Year to everybody. I mean, yes. we are in the first episode of 2016. Uh, we wish you all the best for this upcoming new year. And uh, yeah, Happy New Year to you too, too, Paul. Yeah, Happy New Year. I mean, lots of new stuff coming up this year. And we're starting with, uh, as always, with this season, we're starting with a big piece of news that just happened. I was completely out of the loop, haha, because I was offline for the holidays. It was my detox. And you sent me these piece of news the other day. Wow, pretty impressive. Yeah, I mean, first of all, uh, the big movement, the big move was by Ford uh, together uh, announcing a, a partnership with uh, Google. Um, they are um, developing this um, partnership that will give Ford access to Google's cutting-edge autonomous technology, as it was written in the in the in the article that we will share later. Um, interesting news because it shows that um, the, the the topic of self-driving cars is really really hot right now, and finally, uh, you know, the very well-established automakers are waking up and they are starting to to be more aggressive about it. Uh, and interestingly enough. A couple of days later, there was a big announcement from the part of General Motors. General Motors, uh, yesterday, actually, they announced that they are investing $500 million um, into, into Lyft. And um, the goal there is a little bit different. Basically, over there, what they want to develop is uh, to create an on-demand autonomous car network. So combining these two news seems like there is a lot of things happening in the in the auto industry and we thought that it would be interesting to 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 have a little discussion about this because this could have a big impact for everybody uh maybe not next month maybe not today but this is the beginning and and i like a quote uh by the gm of uh, the gm president uh, dan amman he says that the car industry is going to change more in the next five years than in the past 50. so a lot of really exciting things are coming and and and, and i don't know what do you think about this paul yeah yeah there's uh, like you said it's the beginning it's probably the beginning because of course it's always uh, in insight it's easier to say but it's true that uh, we know that car makers are a bit uh, itchy about these entire situations first it was the millennials that supposedly don't buy cars anymore i mean car ownership is dwindling in uh, some of the Western markets because people have access. I mean, first, they prioritize probably their money elsewhere in gadgets and smartphones and not in cars. Uh, and also because the need of cars is, is going down. And one of the primary reason, of course, is uh, better public transport. But it includes, of course, even though it's not public, Uber, which is the other player that we haven't mentioned yet, who has like a valuation of, what, 60 billion US dollars, is it now? So they've gotten this big for the moment of course they don't have they don't rely on self-driving cars even not on on electrical cars i say it's the beginning because if you look at the numbers of cars sold last year and the year before you can find some really good numbers on asimco for instance asimco is an analyst he does oras he does a lot of analysts analysis on on tech on, on a mobile but also on cars he's a car lover and you see the the sales of cars i mean the, the petrol engine is still obviously very very big electrical is tiny and self-driving is basically nowhere there are still experiments but it's true that like you said uh, all these big car makers are, are seeing that there's something going on uh so i said millennials are using uber i mean of course it's too easy to say that's not as everyone is using uber yet but Uber uh, recently hired, uh, it was also this week, uh, Chris Messina is the inventor of the hashtag. He used to work at um, Google as well. And after two years of doing uh, stuff uh, on the side, he was in this, uh, an advisor for uh, several startups. He joined Uber and he says something that I really like the quote. He says, Uber is now a network facilitator. And that goes exactly what you said in terms of this, it comes, these, these um, transportation networks are becoming so per uh, pervasive, I mean, of course, not fully yet, but so pervasive that maybe you and me, uh, Ivan, we don't need to rely on a car anymore. It's not only about taking the cab to go somewhere and replacing the cab with Uber. It's about doing a lot of transportation stuff via a company like Uber. So Lyft, uh, Lyft had done a partnership with uh, in China with uh, Didi Kuadi because they realized that uh, it's impossible to maybe beat Uber at their game right now. And that latest one is very important because we know as well that Uber is probably also working on self-driving cars. We don't know exactly how they're doing it. Are they uh, are they partnering with someone? I mean, they said the the, the CEO, the founder of of, of Uber, said that 
you would buy already, I think I think it mentioned 200,000 Teslas if they were self-driving, and we know they're already a, you know, assisted driving for the moment, so they recognize the lanes in the US and stuff. So it's a big battle, of this. And, I, and of course, the car makers, you mentioned Ford, GM, but of course, others like Toyota and, uh, and other manufacturers here in Europe, uh, Mercedes, they're all like kind of gearing up to that to say, okay, we need to do something because we know that this is probably going to be the next game, but we don't know yet. I'll, I'll, I'll say one more thing. It also depends on regulation in the UK, for instance. Uh, the um, the regulation for uh, road driving has already included uh, self-driving cars, so they already authorized in the law. And that's actually a big step because that means that if I were to buy one, I could basically use it. Yeah. Would you buy one? Ah, well, absolutely. I would love to. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and actually, you know, it's coming. That Nissan, I read about also that Nissan is planning to have their first fully automated ca car uh, by the year 2020. Uh, and Cadillac is planning to have a semi-autonomous car uh, in 2017. So, yes, wow. this is the direction where we're going. Uh, what I found really interesting is particularly the first deal connected between Ford and Google, because this is a partnership. This is an alliance. Mm -hmm. It's not... Uh, you know, Ford paying a lot of money or investing a lot of money into into the into the company itself, um, but actually they are together trying to figure out. Uh, I like the way it's written in the article: ways in which connected car technology can create alternative mobility solutions. Uh, that sounds really fancy, but 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 that's actually really cool because it's not just about self-driving cars, but it's about uh, additional um, uh, connected car technology. So they are talking about, for example vehicle to vehicle and vehicle to infrastructure communication so for example cars co communicate between each other and uh, and also expand which i think is the, the the trojan horse move from the point of point of view of google uh, the, the opportunity to expand uh, um, the the google's mobile marketing solutions so if you think about it th that system google is the largest mobile um, advertiser and imagine you know you're driving and all of a sudden you get a coupon as you're driving by Starbucks or McDonald's uh, you know this is I think that this is something the direction that will be will be going uh, but I think it's really interesting because uh, according to Juniper research Google has the most advanced self-driving technology today so the fact that they are working together with with Ford which by the way has uh, already expressed that this is not about building uh, uh, Google cars but actually you know developing this new generation of systems that will change the autonomous the, the, the auto industry for the future uh, I think that's an interesting approach and very very cool um, because this hopefully could have a, 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 um, what's the word uh, an effect that Will mobilize the rest of the of the car, uh, automakers. Yeah, it's, you're probably right. I mean, it's uh, I, let's let's be honest. The automakers are also hedging their bets. They know for the moment they know that they're not sending as many cars as used to. I mean, the numbers in the U.S. are kind of back up to the numbers they were in uh, pre-crisis 2008. But still, it's tough. And they don't exactly know where where the market is going. They are all these uh, so investing in Lyft, for instance, is, is a good way to say, okay, let's. Let's bet on something else. Let's bet of not people having their own cars, but people relying on networks of cars. I think there was it was mentioned rental hubs was uh, mentioned in, during the press conference. I'm not sure now, but I mean, I think so. They're hedging their bets. Uh, do, are they fully committed, or are they still having this incumbent mentality of saying, okay, we still rather just want to sell cars? I know that for instance, we know that for instance. Um, I think it was G, uh, GM, they tried to sell uh, an electric car, and it's not self-driving, but years ago, another, the Volt, was it called, uh, I think? Uh, and the interesting bit, it was, it was they tried a different model. It was, instead of selling the car to you, Ivan, they would actually uh, lease it. I mean, it was a subscription. You would subscribe to the car. It was a massive failure. Probably the technology was not there. People were having anxiety over charging their cars and et cetera, et cetera. But maybe people will now probably also... Uh, ready to give up ownership of their cars. Will that change now? It's possible, or will they just rely on Lyft, Uber, and other players? I mean, I say other players, but you remember that sidecar, which was a third player in that game, just basically bailed. It just failed uh, also a few weeks ago. I think it was during the holidays. It's, it's a hard game because it's a game of infrastructure. It, rely, it uh, requires sorry, tons of investment. And we know that Lyft had been um, suffering a bit. And basically, Lyft is a pretty much a US-only play 
which comes back to why they did the partnership with uh, the leader in China, uh, Didi Kuaidi, because they they know that Uber has this kind of network effect for the moment. You can you, you know you used to use I use Uber pretty much in all the cities I go because it just doesn't uh, um, require me to to get for a local currency. But what will happen with self-driving cars? It's very unknown. Which will be the model? Will will you and me end up buying a self-driving car and going to work with it? Or will we just rely on, on an external provider? It's still maybe it's a mix of both. By the way, we still we still don't know. But I think this is why they are they're hedging their their, their backs. So uh, the the funny bit is, uh, I know it's slightly related, but I got an email over the holidays from the I think it was the general manager of Uber in Dubai. Of course, it was not a personal email. It was one of the these emails they sent at the end of the year, and one of the sentences there was like, "Why is there no pre-booking on uh, on Uber? I mean, you have to you have to basically click and wait for the cars to happen. And sometimes you know, it could be like having some anxiety. You go to very early in the morning, and like, will I have an Uber car at this, at, uh, at disposal? And he says in that email says the goal of Uber is to have so many the network to be so good, basically." That you never have that anxiety. So there are yeah. so many cars, and of course, having self-driving cars, and that comes back to Google because Google, you said, is a major advertiser. But on the other end, also Google is probably one of the companies that has the most data about stuff, and you would have the data, of course, about the roads, the road conditions, the even if the I just mentioned the airport, if the plane is late, also about your own conditions, Ivan. So uh, which, of course, is a bit at the same time scary and uh, an opportunity. So they would uh, the self-driving car from Google could actually also press almost predict that oh Ivan is going to need a car tomorrow morning to go to the airport because he has to be there by seven a.m. So you don't, you don't even have to pre-book it; it would just come on its own because the, the network will be there, the data will be provided. Uh, I guess, of course, some, the, some people are scared about that future because that would mean a very invasive type of use data. But I mean, why not? I mean, if I, I have a plane tomorrow morning at six forty a.m., uh, I, I wish I didn't have to think about it. Just have something a robot picking me up in front of my house that would be pretty yeah cool. and, and actually picking you up i don't know 20 minutes earlier because it know there will be traffic you know yes stuff like that. That. yeah you're absolutely yeah. right yeah so and also and also of course the self-driving cars will also help uh, i mean also that's contested but it would probably also help in terms of traffic in terms of, we know that a lot of the traffic is due to uh, the way we drive, uh, of course, a lot of the pollution as well. People we accelerate too much, etc. But also the way we drive sometimes creates bottlenecks. That are having cars that are relying on external data and just having it self self driven would, of course, uh, re reduce that bottlenecks. I'm not. I say it's contested because some people say, yeah, we should rely on a better public transport network and not just on cars. But I mean, this is another debate. But it's interesting. And right now, of course, we we, we are recording today. It's January the fifth. 2015, I think CES is on its way, and there was another. Have you seen that? 2016. That's three. Thank you. See, I'm still <laughs> last year. I'm so last year. Have you seen the 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 Faraday Future thing? The what? Uh, there's this new car. Uh, so apparently, there's a Chinese billionaire that is uh, bailing this. Uh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. It, it looks like a Batmobile. So of course, <laughs> it's a, it's a FF01 or something. Uh, I'm not saying this card is important or not, but to see that even the attention at an event as CS and CS has been, of course, an event about uh, consumer electronics, as his title says, uh, as of course uh, also a lot of things to do about cars. I'll say one more thing, and I'm sorry because I'm rambling, but you also mentioned so there's a step step gap here. You and me have cars. Uh, first of all, there's no self-driving cars that can be bought in the market. But even if tomorrow the self-driving cars can be bought, uh, you know the Time to uh, renewal of cars uh, in every country are, is slightly different, but will take some time. There's this company I want to mention because it's pretty cool. It's called Vinley. It's based in, I think it's in Houston, Texas. Uh, they've just done, by the way, at, um, at CES, they've done a partnership with Uber. So what they do, they provide you with, I think it costs 100 bucks. It's a, it's a connected car, so it's not self-driving, but it's a connected car device that you put in any car, your current car, and your current car certainly has more of the connected car's abilities that your right. normal car doesn't have. And you can actually, if this is a good step, because you could actually have some of the data about the road, et cetera, so certainly should be implemented. And this is why they're offering that 
uh, for with Uber at CES because it also simply allows the Uber drivers to say, hey, there's Wi-Fi in, in the car and that's a good uh, selling point. Sorry, I, I rambled. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, I, I, I think it's, it's fascinating, as you mentioned. And there are a couple of things that I think that also make these announcements more interesting. The fact that, I mean, if you think about it, Tesla uh, has been uh, very successful and is very sexy. Everybody wants to have a Tesla. Yeah, I do. Uh, and I do too, trust me. Uh, but the problem with Tesla, and I think the reason why Tesla is not destroying the market what, what like like a lot of people expected to to happen is because of the price uh you know the moment that tesla is able to 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 produce well, I think and, and manufacture they're getting there but they are not there yet like to, to get you know average people cannot afford a tesla uh so no, so right. no, right. you really you really have to be an affluent to, to be able to, to to buy such car now the interesting thing will happen if Ford or GM start to build these capabilities to more affordable cars. You know, uh, uh, the Fiesta, I think that they are testing, they're going to be testing this new technology that they will be developing together with Google. They will be uh, testing it in, in Fiestas, which are, you know, small, cheap uh, or, or cheaper cars uh, that, that hopefully we'll be able to bring this technology uh, to the masses. So all of a sudden, you don't have to be uh, extremely rich to be able to, to, to afford such technology. But actually, someday, of course, uh, this will open the doors for, for more people to be able to, to enjoy this. Yeah, yeah I, agree. Uh, I totally agree with you. And I, I, I've, actually, if you think about it, even some of the current uh, mid-range cars already have some assisted driving assisted parking they park by themselves and stuff like that of course this is not self-driving but this is the step gap i mean even tesla nowadays doesn't have self-driving it's assisted driving exactly. and it doesn't fully take control of the car it does a kind of in some highways but it's not still self-driving but you're right uh, basically the question becomes will the car makers currently car the current incumbents go fast enough to implement these technologies or will Google and Tesla and others, we, there's rumors about Apple, of course, getting in that game. Will they come with a car that is probably at a high point at the beginning because that's the, invest, the investment phase, but will this price go down fast enough so we will win? That's, very, that's a fascinating, fascinating thing that we will see in the, in the coming years, I think. Yeah, I mean, uh, and 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 well, when it happens, you can tell that you heard it here first. Uh, <laughs> the digital loop breaking news. Uh, that's how smart we are. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, I think I think that as you mentioned, this is something that is going to be really interesting. Uh, it's hard to say that this is the beginning because, as you mentioned, this has been going on for some time. Tesla has been going for some time. Yeah. I, I found out. I was surprised. I have here a note that. G GM actually has been working on autonomous technology for over a decade. They started in 2007, uh, and uh, um, which I was really interesting. I thought that you know they are now starting. They've been working well, on this yeah, for a long I'm, time. I'm not surprised. I mean, if we know that you know the famous example everybody talks about in disruption, Kodak. Kodak was working on digital photography, and just you know they still got you know bankrupt because they didn't want to go ahead with it so i'm not saying that will happen to the cars maybe and maybe this is the reason that they're going into this partnership we started with ford and gms and others are going into partnerships because they're saying okay not only we're hedging our bets but we know we have to do something we're not quite sure what we're not quite sure exactly how the market will react how fast people will adapt to these technologies and also we'll see because we mentioned in an earlier episode of ours already this season about the tech bubble uh, all these uh, again require a lot of of investing from uh, a lot of investors obviously uh if there is a readjustment in the market will there be enough cash available uh, for those big uh, invest uh, infrastructure plays for uber lyft and others so this will i'm not saying we're going there but the speed at which we're going there are still very in question depending on a lot of external factors yeah, and I think that the lesson uh, for for everybody else is this is not just about you know self driving cars and you know high technology. This is about you know organizations waking up and actually investing on yeah. new business models. So I think that the, everybody can have a, a a good opportunity to learn from this 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 these two pieces of news that are happening right now. That you know organizations no matter the size no matter how big they are no matter how successful they are they need to continue innovating and they need to continue looking at different business models that will allow them to continue staying relevant in this digital age 
that we like to, to cover here on the digital loop. There you go. <laughs> and on those very wise words, Ivan, I'll see you in the next episode. Bye, guys.